1971, Marvin Gaye's What's Going On lyrics summarized the essence of a movement. Picket lines and picket signs. Don't punish me with brutality. Talk to me so you can see what's going on. What's Going On aimed to ask a populist to look at the forces shaping American culture at the end of an era born of protests and the beginning of a moment when cultural idealism clashed with the realities of poverty, of war, and radical injustice. It is disheartening to think that 50 years later, Marvin Gaye's song could once again so succinctly be on the pulse of a cultural moment. The 1950s and 60s in America were peppered with protest and moments of progress. The Civil Rights Movement was a response to America not hearing the continued alarm of oppression Black people in the United States were sounding. The 1969 Stonewall Uprising were a protest against police brutality, but more so a protest against the injustices enacted on a people, the LGBTQIA community. Fifty years later, we find that Marvin Gaye's words endure in their purpose, to serve as a clarion call for real answers to systemic issues we continue to fight across the world, throughout America, across Central Ohio, and here in Columbus. Today, the LGBTQI community continues to fight for acceptance and equality as some of the most anti-LGBTQIA legislation is presented across our country, notably even in Ohio, as Ohio House Bill 61 and Senate Bill 132 are considered. As a community, we find ourselves asking, what's going on? Columbus's first Pride Parade was in 1981 and saw 200 people marching from The Ohio State University to the State House in commemoration of the 1969 Stonewall Uprising. In 1982, Stonewall organized Columbus's first official gay pride events. This year, we in Columbus recognized 40 years of leading the Ohio community in the celebration and recognition of LGBTQI community across Central Ohio and the globe. 40 years hence, and we find that while our community has gained marriage equality and equal protections under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, many in our community continue to fight, not just for equality, but for their lives, in particular, our black trans community. Already in 2021, of the 25 determined trans and gender nonconforming individuals who have been murdered, 15 of them were black and seven identified as people of color. What's going on? What must we do to make the world stand up and take notice? As we step into Pride Month, let us celebrate and honor those who have given the ultimate sacrifice, those who have lost their lives, those who have dared to live out loud and proud. Today, around the globe, we kick off the celebration of Pride Month, something first declared here in the US by a president for the first time in 1995. And today, the city of Columbus will do so for the first time. Stonewall's annual in-person Pride March and events are considered one of the largest Pride celebrations of its kind in the Midwest. Last, when we gathered in 2019, an estimated 800,000 people were welcomed to the Central Ohio region. Thank you all for being great hosts. The Stonewall Columbus Pride March and events have long been crucial fundraising tools for our nonprofit organization. Funds raised at Pride events support Stonewall's work to increase visibility, inclusion, and connection for the LGBTQ community. So we all see an Ohio where all of us thrive. As an organization that depends on the support of grants and fundraising, when in-person Pride events are canceled, Stonewall loses funds that would go to support evolving community programs and organizational operations. This year marks the 40th anniversary of Stonewall Columbus Pride events, and we know this year will be a different year for our celebrations. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we find that in Franklin County, large gatherings are still restricted. And as such, we continue to plan for 2021 even with mask mandates being lifted tomorrow, June 2nd. To safely gather over 800,000 people in recognition and celebration of pride is a strategic and engaged process that takes well over a year in coordinated planning with community members, local government, safety and security forces, and numerous vendors and partners. Although we can't gather together in a mass of people, this year we'll work to remind our communities that our fight for visibility, inclusion, and connection are far from over, and our celebration and fight for pride isn't just one moment in time. It's the course of our lived experience, our life movement. The LGBTQI community's pride is greater than a single moment in time. Join us as we work to remind the region that pride in the LGBTQI community is more than a march, a festival, a weekend, or even a month. From a moment to a movement, that's the theme of this year's Stonewall Columbus Pride. Our shared experiences as LGBTQI identities unite us in our story and it should be our individual right for happiness that binds us in our fight for equity and equality. At our core, each of us wants to be seen as valued individuals who are part of a larger community, a community that which, if not embraces, at least respects our individuality. 
We are here today because of the generations before us who fought and sacrificed to get us here. And in this moment, let us affirm that in this movement, we will strive to make change for all of us, not just some of us. On this journey to true liberation and equality for all people. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of the changes you've made. Be proud of the changes you've yet to make. Live out loud and be proud. Happy Pride. Thank you to this year's virtual Pride March event partners, WNBC4 and Mills James Productions. And thank you to our Pride 365 sponsor partners. Maker's Mark, Abercrombie & Fitch, Kroger, Nationwide, Rogue, Schneider Trucking, U.S. Bank, American Electric Power Foundation, Big Lots, L Brands Foundation, Ohio Health, Platinum TDM, Battelle, Bud Light, Cardinal Health, Equitas Health, PNC, Wright Pack Credit Union, Abbott, AIDS Healthcare Foundation, CAS, a division of American Chemical Society, Diamond Hill, Experience Columbus, First Commonwealth Bank, Porter Wright, Wexner Center for the Arts, AARP, CODA, Central Ohio Transit Authority, Kaufman Development, Key Bank, Platform, Town Hall, White Castle, and our numerous friend and fan level sponsors. Well, good evening, everyone, and happy Pride. Woo! Lightweight crowd, but we got to make a lot of noise. <laughs> well, good evening. I am Carla Williams Scott, Director of the City of Columbus Department of Neighborhoods, and I'm pleased to be with you all here this evening, everybody who's here in person and those who are with us virtually to kick off Pride in the City of Columbus. Last year in 2020, we had a total, totally virtual Pride celebration. It was our first virtual Pride celebration. And this year, a few of us are here in person. I hope next year, the third year will be the charm and we will all be able to once again gather here at City Hall to kick off Pride. Thank you, Mayor Ginther, Council President Hardin, Auditor Kilgore, Community Relations Chair Chris Kozad, and Denzel Porteous, Executive Director of Stonewall Columbus for being here with us this evening. And thank you to the members of the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus who will be joining us via video. We have an excellent program planned for you this evening. We will recognize a distinguished leader with the Shellabarger Illuminator Award and Light City Hall with Pride Colors, making it crystal clear to everyone that Columbus is an open and welcoming community for all. As part of Mayor Ginther's equity agenda, the Department of Neighborhoods, in partnership with the Community Relations Commission, our colleagues at Columbus City Council, the city and the City Attorney's Office, completed an in-depth review of Chapter 2331 of the City of Columbus Code that governs the Community Relations Commission, and identified updates that were needed to ensure that our residents have the most up-to-date protections from discrimination. Columbus City Council, led by President Shannon Harden, took bold action to approve the legislation that enhances our Columbus Code. Adding the ability for the Community Relations Commission to ensure a civil fine when discrimination has occurred for a first-time offense 
a fine not to exceed $1,000 can be imposed. Providing protections for those who choose to wear natural hairstyles. Ensuring protection for our LGBTQIA youth and protecting those who receive gender affirming care and protecting individuals who choose to exercise their reproductive rights. Thank you, Mayor Ginther, Community Relations Commission, City Attorney, and City Council for your bold leadership. It is now my pleasure to introduce a leader who is deeply committed to our city and our residents. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Andrew Ginther to the podium. Thank you, Director, and it is a great night here in the city of Columbus, a beautiful night, and look forward to lighting up City Hall in honor and recognition and celebration of pride. I want to thank Council President Hardin, Council Member Remy, Auditor Kilgore, Director William Scott, Denzel Porteous, Chris Kozad, and our awardee this evening, Aaron Upchurch. I was thinking about this as I was sitting here, Aaron, and thinking of, of this word right above us, service. And I think it says a lot uh, of what you do every day in this community, your incredible contributions, your service uh, to uh, not just the young people in the LGBTQIA community, but this greater community. And I'm so grateful that the council president is going to be uh, celebrating and awarding your and recognizing your leadership in just a few moments. This year we celebrate pride in an important moment in our city's history. The tail end of a global pandemic, the start of a new presidency in the midst of our work to eliminate hatred, bigotry, and racism, and during the 40th anniversary of Stonewall Columbus. 40 years of excellence and impact is an incredible milestone by any conceivable measure. That's four decades of active and inspiring leadership to advance equality and dignity for the LGBTQ plus community. Four decades of expanding protections and demanding justice before legislators, courts, and the changing tides of public opinion. Four decades of advocates and allies joining forces to right the wrongs of the past and address the shortcomings of that present, that persist and that are present still today. In four decades of demonstrating to the world the power and beauty of intersecting identities and beliefs, thoughts and expressions, achievements and aspirations. Of course, the origins of this movement date back further than 40 years to the Stonewall Inn more than a decade earlier, to the very first organizations dedicated to personal liberty and freedom, and to those who throughout the history and with the courage of their convictions bravely shared their truth in their own way, in their own words, at their own time. We're grateful for the lessons we have learned from the past, for those who helped to chart and forge our collective path ahead. Because of their contributions and their sacrifices, we know that change begins in the hearts, minds, and imaginations of those who stand up and speak out. It is incumbent upon each of us to honor the legacy of those who came before us, to continue their work, and to build a more equitable, inclusive, and welcoming Columbus. We are a community that lifts each other up. And we are a community that never settles for less than our best. I'm confident that our brightest and most hopeful days still lie ahead, and we will arrive at that moment together. Thank you, Columbus. Thank you, Stonewall. And most importantly, happy pride. Thank you, Mayor, for those inspiring words. The work that we do to protect our residents would not be possible without our partners in City Council. It is now my honor and pleasure to join 
to welcome City Council President Shannon Harden to the podium. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Thank you, Director. Thank you to our mayor uh, for bringing us back together. Thank you, Director William Scott, for hosting us uh, once again. Uh, we, we appreciate you. To my colleague, Councilmember Remy, uh, to Denzel Portis, uh, Stonewall, to Ms. Chris Kozad, to our honoree this evening, uh, and to everyone uh, that has gathered with us virtually. Uh, and even some from afar, uh, still socially distanced out there uh, with us. Uh, it's an honor to be with you in person. So I, I've missed everyone. I've missed seeing you and being around you and uh, engaging with you. Um, and not only just because of COVID, but a lot of you know that we have big news in our family. We have welcomed our first child, uh, Noah Harden Zacharis, to our family. He was born uh, five weeks ago. He's five weeks old now. Um, he was small, but uh, is mighty. Um, and I just want to say thank you to all of you who have reached out, have sent well wishes. Uh, the Columbus community, we feel loved uh, and we are very grateful. I also want to acknowledge his birth mom, um, who made a very difficult uh, decision, uh, and then the nurses that took care of us when we were in the NICU. Um, but as we usher in uh, Pride Month, I think it's critical to acknowledge our community's past and how far we've come over 50 years. And even today, as we pause to remember uh, the massacre uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we remember that it's important to stop and look back. Um, it reminds us how far we've come, but it also uh, reminds us of the work that is done. It also allows us to honor the struggles of folks who had it much harder than we did to make it so that we could be here today. Uh, and, and Ben and I, we've talked about this since we've had the baby, that our history is new. It, this is new for us to even be able to, to, to be here and to have a child together. It was less than 50 years ago that New York became the first state not to reject adoptive applicants solely because of parents' sexual orientation. It was in 1979 that a gay couple in California became the first in the country to jointly adopt a child, 1979. It wasn't until 1997 that New Jersey became the first state to allow same-sex couples, sex couples to adopt statewide. And not until 2010 did Florida become the final state to overturn a ban on adoption by gay men and women. And while this may seem like a story of unrelenting progress, we know the truth is more complicated. Even now, the Supreme Court is weighing whether adoption agencies are able to discriminate against LGBTQ uh, couples in the case Fulton versus Philadelphia. And based on the oral argument, some legal experts anticipate that the court will uh, uh, rule against uh, Philadelphia and their anti-discrimination laws. The court could go back and weaken the Obergefell ruling in an attempt to strip away the rights that we've worked so hard and that we've earned. This stacks atop the many disparities gay, lesbian, and trans individuals face in our community. But in times of uncertainty, I often turn to my Morehouse brother, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who said that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it always, it always bends towards justice. But it doesn't just bend towards justice. It doesn't just do that because it's preordained to do that. It bends because we push on it. We jump on it. We bend, we fight, we protest. We talk to our families and our friends and we sue. And when we honor our history and we celebrate each other. We have a long history, an important history. And as we celebrate this pride, and, and I said this last year, you know, pride is a time of celebration. And it certainly has become that in Columbus, the lar one of the largest prides in this country. But one of the things that COVID allowed us to do or forced us to do was slow down, think, sit. You gotta remember, we said it back when we were in the parade that the first pride was a protest. We said it was a struggle, but we did it with a smile on our face and uh, you know, uh, with a lot of cheer. Maybe these last two prides, this one in the pride last year, where we have to be a little bit more solemn we have to be a little slower, allows us to really think and process the many, 
many sacrifices of the folks that came before us and allow us to truly honor the folks that are still doing the work today. And I look forward to doing that a little bit later. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council President Harden. And again, congratulations to you and Ben and welcome baby Noah to the City of Columbus family. It is now my pleasure to introduce city, the City of Columbus's first female and first openly LGBTQ leader of an executive branch office in our community. Please join me in welcoming to the podium our city auditor and my friend, Megan Kilgore. Good evening. Thank you, Director William Scott, for once again bringing us all together for this very important event. And thank you to so many friendly faces. I just told Chris Kozad it's not a pride without her. And I am just so appreciative. You talked about history, Council President. I mean, we have so much to be thankful for um, from to Chris and all of your years of work. Um, it means a lot uh, every year that you spend so much time making this city a better place. It is an absolute honor to, to be here this evening, and I am just thrilled to also recognize a newer leader in our community, uh, Aaron Upchurch. Um, I've watched you. I adore you. I think the work that you're doing is spectacular and certainly so important um, at all times, but watching what you did through the pandemic, this um, award is meant for you. So congratulations, friend. Um, I want to share a little bit about you know what this light up means to me. I, every time I see and I drive past City Hall, I am reminded when our beautiful building is lit up by every color of the rainbow that we celebrate diversity, not just you know here in Columbus during the month of June, but every single day. And we are a beacon of light to everyone, a beacon that we are inclusive, that a Columbus is a home for every walk of life. And that's what I know each and every one of us is here celebrating this evening. But as we um, kind of emerge from not only a crisis on top of a crisis, a global pandemic, a reckoning of, 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 of historic racial justice, I, I think tonight means for me it's more than just a, a lighting ceremony. Um, we only if, are, are maybe few here on this, this patio this evening, but a lot of us are gathering at home. And for me personally, um, this has been a hard year. Ben and Shannon were able to welcome a, a brilliant addition to their family. I lost one. This will be my first pride and my first birthday without my mother. Um, she was uh, a very tough battle with dementia. And, you know, frankly, for an entire year, I couldn't see her. And that's really difficult. And so I've been thinking a lot about, you know, this, those of you who are viewing this event tonight, we lost something during this past couple of years. And, you know, so many of us have experienced pain or hardships. And I can't help but think that a lot of us are very different people um, than perhaps we were a year and a half ago. And so this year's lighting ceremony to me really has, it's, felt more symbolic of, of more than just pride and what we typically, you know, kind of honored this evening. These, these colors that will be cast upon the walls, and I love this building. Those of you who, who know me know I talk about the history of this building, but these beautiful stone walls, the neoclassical architecture, there's something that really resonates with me about the rainbow symbol on this beautiful stone facade. And to me that means the future, the future that is diverse and hopeful also casting light upon our past. And I, I really, I really love this. So we know what beauty and diversity means to a population. That's why we, we celebrate, and all of us uh, elected officials up here work so hard to support the good work of Denzel at Stonewall or Aaron at Kaleidoscope. But I know all too well of the work that we must do statewide and nationally. And that is the commitment that I know um, all of us here share this evening. So I hope everyone has a beautiful month of pride. I hope each and every one of you are able to celebrate with friends and family in your own ways and do what you can to honor the goodness that is Columbus's commitment to diversity. Thank you all so much for being here and congratulations again to our honoree. Director.
Thank you, Auditor Kilgore. It is now my pleasure to invite and welcome Denzel Porteous to the podium. Denzel is the Executive Director of Stonewall Columbus. Good evening, everyone. It is a true honor and humbling privilege to stand here this evening as an out and openly queer black man. While the privilege I have may be limited, I know that aspects of my privilege helped me to be here today. And so for that, I will always make space for others. I know that I stand on the shoulders of many who lay their lives on the line simply to live their truth, not necessarily to be martyrs for a movement. It is important that we know our history to know how we got our rights. It is important to know our history so we can fight for the members of our community who continue to be disenfranchised. It is important for us to know our history, the history that we were never taught. And it is important for all LGBTQI people to see themselves in that history. LGBTQI pride is a part of American history. And while LGBTQI history has often not been told, when told, it has been made more palatable for public consumption. The Stonewall uprisings were protests against police brutality. Protests against the injustices enacted upon an LGBTQ people. Our pride is a matter of protest. And at its core, it's about our desire to be happy. A desire to step out into the world fully as we individually were always and truly meant to be. That is why black trans rights activists Marsha P. Johnson and others stepped out. That is why they stepped out into the night, in protest, so they could live freely in the daylight. The 1969 Stonewall uprisings were, were not the first. Our community had fought for our pride before. May 1959, Cooper Donuts, Los Angeles. April 1965, Dewey's Restaurant, Philadelphia. August 1969, Compton's Cafeteria, San Francisco. We must know our history in order to do the work so we do not repeat that history. And although we have marched in commemoration of the Stonewall Uprisings, we have also marched on for LGBTQIA rights. The National March on Washington, D.C. for Lesbian and Gay Rights, October 14, 1979. The Second National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights, October 11, 1987. The Millennium March on Washington in April 2000. The National Equality March on October 11, 2009, Washington, D.C. The National Pride March in Washington, D.C. on June 11, 2017. We must know our history in order to do the work so we do not repeat that history. Columbus's first Pride March was in 1981 and saw 200 people, some of whom wore face coverings to protect their identities, marching from The Ohio State University to the State House, not only in commemoration of the 1969 Stonewall Uprising, but also in order to draw light to our community, a community of LGBTQI individuals who here in central Ohio continue to live in secret, afraid to live out loud. 40 years hence, and during our last in-person Pride March, the city welcomed over 800,000 individuals in celebration and recognition of Pride, a long way from 200 marchers and a few spectators. And while we may be seen, we are still under attack. Today, the LGBTQI community continues to fight for acceptance and equality as some of the most anti-LGBTQI legislation is presented across our country, targeting LGBTQI youth and trans identities. And where in 2021, we have seen already the murders of 27 trans and gender non-conforming individuals, 16 of whom are black and seven of whom identified as people of color. While Pride Month is a celebration of our community being seen we must not rest until all of our community and its members are equal and seen. We stand on the shoulders of many who lay their lives on the line simply to, simply to live their truth, not necessarily to be martyrs for a movement. This year, on June 12th, we will mark 15, five years from when 49 people were killed in a mass shooting inside Pulse, a gay nightclub. We stand on the shoulders of many who laid their lives on the line simply to live their truth not necessarily to be martyrs for a movement. Today, let us be emboldened by our history, by our leaders of pride, and be inspired to intentionally shape a future that we create together 
that includes intentional acts of grace, accountability, and inclusion. As we step back out into the world, we have an opportunity to step back into the world as we were truly meant to be, a creation of our own, working to create a more inclusive and affirming community here in Columbus and across the world. Our city won't change unless we change it. Let's step back out into the city as we were meant to be. This year, as we celebrate pride, let us celebrate and honor those who have given the ultimate sacrifice, those who have lost their lives, those who dared to be proud. For if not for them, I would not be able to be standing here daring to be proud. Happy Pride Month, Columbus. And so thank you, thank you for those remarks. Our next speaker is one of our key partners in the work that we do every day in the Department of Neighborhoods. I'm grateful for her recent efforts to lead the Community Relations Commission through the process to update our city code and increase anti-discrimination protection for our residents. Please join me in welcoming my friend and chair of the Community Relations Commission, Chris Kozad, to the podium. Thank you, Carla. Mayor Ginther, Shannon, friends, everybody, greetings and happy pride. As I sat down to write my remarks for this evening, I looked back over some of the speeches I've given in the past few years at Pride Elimination, and I realized I could simply use one of them tonight. No one would likely remember. Certainly, the truths have not changed but I would know. You, my friends, my community, deserve more than my recycled speech. It's Pride Month. You deserve the fire in my belly, in our collective bellies, the fire to fight, the fire to stand strong in the face of oppression and injustice. It's Pride Month. You deserve to breathe easy for a moment, to dance in the streets and celebrate our successes and our progress. Allow that celebration to blow in the winds of change we all so desperately want and need. It's Pride Month. You deserve to stand your ground, literally and figuratively. Just like the butch dykes and drag queens, many of them black and brown people, on that hot June night in 1969. We are all of this earth and this human family. We deserve love and respect. It's Pride Month. You deserve your tears as we mourn the losses that hate has perpetuated on all of us from Pulse nightclub to Harvey Milk, from HIV and AIDS to COVID-19, from Matthew Shepard to the 40-plus trans people murdered in 2020 and the 27 so far in 2021. We have lost our friends and our families. Our tears must water the seeds of a new day, a day when we can all be free. But there was another side to this going. Our passion joy, bravery, and grief come with responsibility. A responsibility to ourselves, to each other, and to our community. A responsibility to act. Our passion, the fire in our bellies, must translate to doing the work, to act. To do what you can to create change. Volunteer, write letters, to editors, to your elected officials. Give money to just causes and organizations regularly. Take an unhomed LGBTQ youth into your home and your heart. You will not regret it, I promise you. Find ways to make positive change in your world. 
As we celebrate our successes and the progress we have made, know that the work is not finished. It is important to stop and enjoy these moments, but we must take up the standard again and keep pushing. None of us is truly free until we are all free. Use the celebration to recharge, to re-energize, and to re-engage in the change we wish to see in the world. As we stand together as LGBTQ plus people this month, we must also stand with our allies and friends. We must fight for their liberation as we have our own. We must educate ourselves about oppression and privilege, about power and control, about racism and anti-Semitism. We must stand beside others in their struggle as we ask them to stand with us. Together we are stronger than the sum of our parts. Together we can make change happen. As we grieve together, we must find ways to carry on the work that has been left unfinished. We must grieve with our black and brown friends and neighbors. We must grieve with our friends, our families, and our communities. We must grieve for all that we have lost, the people, the institutions, the freedoms. We must find ways to channel that grief into work for change. The seeds of change are small and fragile, and we must nurture them so that they can grow and take root. I spoke with Steve Schallabarger this morning he could not be with us this evening, but he sends his love and his reminder that pride and pride illumination are not about the speakers. This award is not about Steve, even though it's named in his honor, <laughs> which he hates. <laughs> they are about the work. They are about the change that is needed. Tonight is about honoring our leaders. It is about leaving a legacy that will guide our future. It is about recharging and celebrating together so that we have the vision and the energy to continue. It is about remembering our history, those who have been lost, those who inspire us. I am an out proud lesbian every day, not just this evening, not just in Pride Month. I am proud to chair the Columbus Community Relations Commission and I'm extremely proud of the work that we did on the new city code, keeping Columbus at the forefront of municipal leadership around diversity and civil rights. I'm particularly proud to hear Carla talk about it this evening. I'm also proud to be one of six different people who separately nominated Aaron Upchurch for the 2021 Stephen Schallabarger Illuminator Award. I am proud to call Aaron my friend, she served with me on the Community Relations Commission. She is passionate about LGBTQ youth and her work with Kaleidoscope. She is passionate about equality. She is passionate about social justice. She is passionate about public service. Erin exemplifies having fire in her belly. Erin has passion, joy, bravery, and grief. She has taken the responsibility to act, and for that, Erin, I thank you. Good evening, my friends, and happy Pride. And now I would like to invite Council President Hardin up to share a little bit more about our Shellabarger Award winner, and um, then allow our awardee to give remarks. Yes. Thank you again, Director. Um, before I uh, read about the uh, Stephen Schellerberger Award, I just want to thank the committee uh, and the folks who host uh, this event uh, to the Department of Neighborhoods, to Robin uh, Davis and the Mayor's Communications team, to Linda Capobianco uh, in my office, and CTV. Thank you all for serving as the committee who uh, does the hard work behind the scenes to bring us back together. Uh, like I said, I have the pleasure of presenting the Steven Schallerberger Illuminator Award. The Illuminator Award was created to recognize an individual within the Columbus community who has demonstrated outstanding initiative to promote LGBTQIA rights and in doing so 
has created a more inclusive Columbus. Past recipients include Ms. Gloria McCauley, Ms. Linda Schuler, John Sherman Lathrum, Scott Schoper, Andrew Levitt, AKA Ms. Nina West, Letha Pugh, and of course, our namesake, Mr. Steven Schallerberger. This year, I'm truly excited to present this award to a true leader in our community, Aaron Upchurch. Many of us have known Aaron for years. We've seen her transform spaces to ensure individuals are seen and everyone's valued is, uh, everyone is valued and respected. Her interpersonal uh, kindness and genuine, uh, genuine care is always on display. Professionally, Erin is a social worker and leads Kaleidoscope Youth Center. Since Erin began her leadership at KYC, the operating budget has doubled. Erin dramatic, uh, has dramatically grown the staff at KYC, including increasing the number of queer people of color on the staff by 20%. Congratulations for that. Nonprofit leaders wrote in to talk about their support of Erin. Erin's uh, a go-to partner in the sector. She's helped others in housing uh, who have, has had, had been housing insecure, and she has uh, led this organization in, uh, in securing new housing opportunities at their KYC property downtown. She is a bridge builder. She brings personal transparency and vulnerability to all spaces. And I'm so happy to have her leadership here in Columbus. It is with great honor that I'd like to present Aaron Upchurch with the Steven Schallerberger Illuminator Award. I got a little distracted by this gorgeous sunset behind us. It's like it's the sky's being lit up for us all. Thank you so much, Council President Harden, uh, Mayor Genther, Director William Scott, elected officials, Chris, Denzel, and to my sweet partner, Karen, to our youth, and to our community. I've always said that this work is never done alone. We need, leaders need leaders by their side, standing with and for them. And so to all of you in the community and those that um, completed this nomination, thank you so much. I am queer, I am a woman, I am black. I am a woman, I am black, and I am queer. I am black, I am queer, and I am a woman. These are all parts of me. This is me integrated and unified. My vision is for a world where each part of me gets to belong, where all of me matters, where all of me is seen as sacred. It is exhausting to exist within the tiny holes in which many work hard to keep us, people like you, people like me. I desire a world and community where, where pride is about the thing deep on the inside that allows me and us and our siblings to do more than survive. My hope is that not one of us is ever considered unnecessary or disposable. All of us or none of us, all voices, not some voices, each life and every life. Please do not mistake this as a sanitized musing of a postmodern Pollyanna story that exists deep within the recesses of my imagination. I want you to understand that the fear of my black son being harmed by police supersedes any desires I may have for a parade, a brunch, or a breakfast. And I want it to supersede yours too. The horror of anti-trans violence sometimes keeps me awake at night, and I wanted to keep your eyes open too. I can't bear the thought of another young person ending their life because they didn't know anything else was possible. And I want your mind also held hostage in knowing that even one young person despises who they see in the mirror. I don't want unity. I don't want tolerance. I don't even want to be welcomed. I want affirmation. I want solidarity. And I want to belong. 
My invitation is to simply ask you to join me in creating a world that we know is possible. Love my queerness so closely that you can feel and hear the drumbeat of my queer heart dancing within my queer soul. Love my womanhood in a way that is expansive enough to also love those whose truest and most beautiful version of themselves invites us into deeper, holier versions of who we are. Love my blackness in a way that helps me keep myself, my children, and all of our children alive. Allow us to thrive. Love me to life and I too will also love you. To illuminate is to light a path, to disappear darkness, to expose that which lies in front of our very own eyes. Each and every one of us here has a light that lives on the inside, a fire, sacred fire if you will. Let us be together in our fire to dismantle the systems that no longer serve us in our communities. Let us continue to blaze the trail and place our hope in something different and something new. Happy Pride. Thank you, Erin. And again, congratulations on receiving the award this evening. Well, we are almost ready to conclude our program. But before we do, we have a video of the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus who will be jo joining us virtually. And then when the video is finished, I invite all of our speakers up for the countdown for the illumination of City Hall. As we all know, this last year or so of our lives has been the most bizarre world ever, and it's definitely going to go down in history. Now, I can't speak for all black people, but I do know that for a lot of us, being black in America can be a particular and tricky experience, and that is saying it nicely. Some days I feel magical, literally magical. My people are literal, magic. I feel upheld by the strength, power, and courage of millions of ancestors that have come before me. Some days, I can rejoice in who I am. I can sing freely with a bunch of white dudes in a baseball field. <laughs> but someday, <laughs> someday, there's no way around it. Some days, it's just really heavy.
Everybody ready? <laughs> it's her night. You got to follow the lead. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, eight seven, five, six, five, four, three, three two, two, one. Happy, Happy Pride! Pride!